Good morning. Welcome back to Venture Daily. I'm Jackson Fordyce. I'm Josiah Simons. It's Friday, August 8th, and OpenAI has just launched GPT-5, calling it its smartest, fastest, and most useful model yet, available immediately to all ChatGPT users with Plus and Pro, subscribers getting higher limits and access to more powerful variants. I don't have it yet. Uh, you may not either, though. Same. It's a gradual rollout, according to my chat. That's what my chat told me. Yeah. Uh, our paid account didn't even have it yet as of this recording, uh, and neither does my free account. So... Feel free to check yours now, see if it's been rolled out to you, but that is a little bit frustrating because <laughs> we wanted to do a whole episode where yeah. we would show you kind of 4.0 versus 5 and we'd compare them on the show. Can't do that, but that's okay. Maybe we'll do that in a future episode. Right. Uh, but CEO Sam Altman described GPT-5 as a significant step along the path to AGI with expert level capabilities across writing, coding, math, health, and visual perception, though it still cannot learn continuously after de deployment. This is a sign that the model has not yet reached general intelligence. Right. GPT-5 is a unified system with a built-in thinking mode for harder problems and a router that automatically decides when to use quick or deep reasoning, improving over time based on real user signals. The model posts state-of-the-art scores on multiple benchmarks, 94.6% on AIME, 2025 math, 74.9% on SWE bench verified coding, 84.2% on multimodal HHHU, and 46.2%... MMMU. Oh my gosh, sorry about that. <laughs> MMMU, and 46.2% on health bench hard, uh, while showing major gains in real-world tasks over 40 occupations. Yeah, so I wanted to dive deeper into those benchmarks. I know that was like a bunch of numbers coming <laughs> yeah, at you. I don't know probably easier to see it on screen. So <laughs> yeah. here is what GPT-40 told me about these benchmarks. There we go. Because uh, I, I wanted to ask it, compare them with other AI competitors. So I asked my chat, which uh, is GPT-40? So GPT-40 spit this out for me. That's okay. what you see on top. But it's telling me about GPT-5. I asked it, compare GPT-5 to the best models from XAI, Perplexity, Anthropic, Meta, and others. Okay. And here's what it gave me. So in short, GPT-5 leads across all benchmarks, top in math, tighter leading in coding, dominant in multimodal, and ahead in health-related reasoning. Okay. Then I asked Grok, because I was like, <laughs> oh, well, you got to ask both sides. Grok's, so, nah, we're, 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 we're way better. Yeah, so I said, well, what do you think of the numbers? First of all, Grok was highly skeptical of these reported benchmarks and mentioned to me several times That's so that funny. these numbers are not confirmed. It literally told me, I'll assume the scores you provided are <laughs> hypothetical or based on speculative, speculative claims. Okay. <laughs> so here's Grok's answer to the model comparison question. Okay. Uh, this is Grok 3. And it told me, if the GPT-5 scores are accurate, it's a top contender, rivaled only by Grok 4, of course. which slightly edges it out in math and coding. So if you see here, Grok 4 wins on math and coding, but it does look like GPT-5 leads in both the MMMU multimodal and the health bench hard. Yeah, that's pretty close everywhere. It is pretty close. And it's like, you know... Who knows which is actually the best? Yeah. We can't even ask GPT-5 because we don't have it yet. I know. Are but, you better than Grok? Of course I'm better than Grok. <laughs> yeah, but I was surprised. So I, all transparency, I've never used Grok before. This is my first time really? asking it a question. It is very like, it's very full of itself a little it, bit. It's a little silly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it is way more like willing Playing, yeah. to take, like have an opinion than my chat has ever been. And I kind of like, I kind of like the vibe, but I, I think I prefer chats way of responding yeah, like to chat's things. a little friendlier yeah and and doesn't like <laughs> i don't know we're calling him chat yeah grok grok is just a little i don't know full of himself you know yeah. he thinks he's the man and maybe he is the man. not humble at all maybe she is the man i, I, I don't want to i don't want to assume <laughs> <laughs> but yeah interesting stuff gpt5 right. not only scores excellent on benchmarks but open ai says it also has reduced hallucinations by up to 65 percent compared to 03 jackson okay. so it has cut sick of uh, sycophancy rates by more than half and improved instruction following multi-step tool use and the ability to complete complex projects end to end. We were going to show you guys that on the show today, but we don't have it. So we can't know, show maybe you. It, Sorry maybe about in another that. show. It's okay. Yes. The lineup of open AI models now includes GPT-5, GPT-5 mini, GPT-5 nano, API only, and GPT-5 pro, the longest thinking variant that experts preferred in nearly 68% of evaluations over GPT-5 thinking. OpenAI reports 700 million weekly 
active ChatGPT users, 5 million paying business users, and 4 million API developers, and says GPT-5 should feel less like talking to AI and more like chatting with a helpful friend with PhD level intelligence. Yeah, how fun is a PhD level friend? Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know if it was Altman, but somebody said uh, that their first model that came out was like talking to a uh, undergrad student. Okay. GPT-4 was like talking to a graduate student sure. and now five is like talking to a phd level student and a phd or not phd gpt6 like talking to that gender that's really smart <laughs> that knows yeah. way more than the phd yeah. level person the uh the matt damon character exactly i Good see hunting and for more on the story i called ken ringdahl pleasure to be here my name is ken ringdahl i'm the chief technology officer at inverse uh we are a software company delivering spend management and business travel management solutions to our customers. For my first question for Ken, I ask, Sam Altman says GPT-5 is clearly a general intelligent model and likens the leap from GPT-4 to 5 to, to the iPhone's retina display. Do you agree? And if so, what's actually changed for the end user or enterprise developer? Yeah, so I think, you know, obviously it just came out. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll see it, 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 everything that's been reported so far, all the benchmarks like that's that's I think what we have to go on at the moment because it is so fresh and new. The benchmarks look amazing. Sort of another analogy I, I've seen that uh, from Sam and, and others at OpenAI is like GPT-3 was talking to a high schooler, then a college student. And now, you know, GPT-5 is like a Ph.D. student. Um, and and we saw a, a you know, significant jump from three to four, four to four. Oh, uh, we are expecting there's going to be a very significant jump and, you know, as some have referred to it as super intelligence. Um, this really just helps us substantially. And, you know, those of us that leverage the model and, you know, whether you're using it for day to day use or, or like us, uh, you know, embedding it into our application. Um, this is going to make our applications more intelligent to be able to deliver more value to our customers. Um, you know, the higher the accuracy, the lower the latency, like these things are also getting more cost conscious as well, like because they're you know, they're, they're uh, more fine tuned models, they're getting more efficient. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's almost like a rising tide uh, of, of sorts. My next question for Kim, GPT-5 is OpenAI's best model for health related queries and claims a 65% drop in hallucinations. Do you see this unlocking adoption in regulated industries or do concerns around safety and explainability still hold it back? I think there's still gonna be some concerns, you know, almost like the, the old fashioned trust but verify model. Um, you know, you wanna, I think all of us, especially me as a CTO, like I, I want us to all leverage the tools and technologies available available to us to make us more efficient, uh, to drive more value, to, to get more done, quite honestly. Um, you know, whether we can totally trust it, I think, you know, there's ways in which, you know, we do it and we validate all of our, all of our data, we sample our data and we make sure that that's accurate and we're constantly doing that uh, so we can fine tune it for health. It, it's going to totally depend on the use case uh, and and what type of advice, because, you know, if your application or, or whatever your use case is, is providing uh, that information back to a, a person or a user, or a group of people, you're, you're sort of responsible for what that returns and, and you take ownership for that. And we, you know, when we think about our use of AI, we, we take the same approach as well. Hmm. Yeah, that's a very interesting, like uh, developing conversation is that the AI companies are trying very hard to make their models accurate, they, that they have you know responses that are true. Yep. But at the same time, I think that most people would say, if you are a user of AI, it is your responsibility when you are using that for something important yeah. to make sure that it is spitting out the right answers. And if it doesn't, and then you provide that for a, a client or you provide that for in, in a health situation, you yeah. know, you need to check that. Yeah. If, if, if you provide something that's incorrect, you can't blame the AI. Like it's your responsibility to have double checked, to verify that it was the right thing. So I think this is going to be a continuing conversation though, that like how much responsibility do the AI companies have? Yeah. And how providing much responsibility... factual information. Or yeah. Correct information. Because that's their whole goal is to make a model that does, does give you very accurate results. Yeah. So I don't know, like I feel like today the responsibility absolutely falls on us. But I wonder if there's a point in the future where the responsibility will lie with the models simply because they're that good. Yeah, you're promising 99.99%, you know, correctness or, you know, uh, yeah. no hallucinations. But now we get those. Maybe in the future they say yeah. that and it's like, do they like, become... I, 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 when's the first lawsuit, you know, yeah, that's going to come probably. out of like, hey, 
you guys promised me in some way that this was going to be accurate. It yeah. was not accurate. And like, they'll have somewhere in the fine print, like, you know, we say that it's almost accurate all the time, but you know, right. there's, there's a couple of times that it'll hallucinate. That's just the, yeah. the nature of the technology. And yeah. That's the thing is like, what <laughs> point did they start saying we no longer have hallucinations? Maybe never, yeah. but it has got to be at some you, point you, a model. You, yeah. I think so too. You can't, yeah. you can't be saying that. I also asked Ken, has GPT-5 widened the moat or are other models like Claude, Gemini and other open source challengers still very much in the race? They're still very much in the race. You know, it's uh, OpenAI was the first. Uh, they were they were the leader. Uh, it is a bit of an arms race. You know, I, I, I you know you're always always looking at it like whoever's the next one to release their next generation model almost like jumps above that one, and the next one jumps above. OpenAI is still clearly the leader. There's no question about it. Um, but you've seen they they have they have leaned more into. The application space, you know, they they've got the they've got the best LLM that's out there, no question about it. Uh, but you see, in some of the acquisitions they're doing, some of the partnerships they're doing, they are looking to widen that moat by by adding applications that leverage their LLM on top of that. And I think it's a smart strategy for the company because ultimately, this stuff all gets commoditized, um, and you know, you, you you can race and stay ahead and stay stay ahead. Eventually everyone sort of catches up and in the middle and you start to look at your differentiators. And I th think for OpenAI, it has been looking at some of those applications they can they can build on top. For my final question for Ken, Altman called GPT-5 a significant step along the path to AGI, but stop short of saying it's there. With every model release framed as a milestone, do you think we're in a real race to AGI or just an escalating marketing war? You know, I, I, um, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know for sure. You know, I'm 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 a little bit of a skeptic when it comes to to AGI. Um, I, I hope it is reality. Uh, you know, all the people that are much closer to it than I, Sam Altman and Mark Zuckerberg and others that in, in this every day uh, in building those LLMs, uh, they feel it's close. Um, it's a pretty high bar. Uh, it's a pretty high bar to get there. Um, I, I'm a little skeptical. I think at some point we will we will get to that point, but it's still very much. Uh, sort of an assisted journey, you know, you, you hear the term often with AI tools of co-pilot, you know, it's somebody that is your, your assistant that's sitting next to you that just makes you super productive. Can it take over what we do in, in total? Maybe. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a little bit of a skeptic, but, but I think it's totally possible to get there. Have you seen the poly market numbers for will we reach AGI by the end of the year? <laughs> I have not. Is it more in the yes category or no? It's more in the no category. Okay. 10% chance of 10%, okay. reaching AGI by the end of the year. Yeah. See, this is the thing though. What is AGI? What, yeah. is, what is the actual benchmark that would say that, right. that we've reached it? And like he said, I mean, he said the bar, the bar is really high. Well, what if you just lower the bar, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because I think the first, whoever claims it first, because yeah. at some point, one of these models, one of these companies needs to say, we've we done did it. it. Yeah. Right? Oh, we're, we're scratching the surface of it even. Too. I, I think that all of them are like, they kind of want to, but they know the second that you be, you're the first to say it, everyone else is just going to like, you know, th they're going to criticize you immediately and, and they're going to find every hole they can to say, no, this yeah. is not general intelligence. So I think people, the, the top companies are just Or do you think they're all going to say like, oh, we also have it too. Oh, we have it too. Oh, we have it too. If... I think they would only say that if the model that comes out that does, you know, reach AGI yeah. is actually so good that they have to like they have to resort to that strategy rather than yeah. poking holes in it. They have to go to, oh, we have it too. It reminds me of succession. Like we have to call the presidency. Like let's just call it. Let's call it. Why not? Let's just say we that they they want it. The Republicans want it. And every other news outlet's like, okay, they want it too. Yeah, they want yeah, it. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, the, whoever goes if, first. If, if uh, XIS says we reached AGI, I'm sure OpenAI will either, I guess, do what you, mm -hmm. you know, explain of saying, absolutely not. You Here look the holes. You, or they say like, oh, we reached it too. We just haven't said it yet. Like, yeah. Look at our thing. We have. You're right, because you look weak if your oh, yeah. whole strategy is, no, you didn't. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. didn't reach it. You're so soft. Yeah. Let us win. It's like, oh, oh, we didn't you're reach it, prove it. anti-technology. Yeah. You don't want AGI to happen. Yeah, so I think you're right. They're like, probably, they're, they're going to struggle to pick which strategy to go with. Yeah. It's like, are we just going to say, oh, we've reached it too, and here's why? Yeah. Or are we going to try to tear down the the claim yeah open if xia does it open i is going to say we have it but we were too afraid to release it because it's too strong and powerful but we have to now here it is and it's like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll see i don't know I, I i think if i was on poly market i'd probably be in the no category yeah i'm, I'm on the yes cat category for the end of next year like i said that's right yep. famously
Thank you to <laughs> that famously. Uh, thank you to Ken Ringdahl for being on the show today. All right, that's it for Venture Daily. Thank you so much. This is Friday, so it's the end of the week. Uh, we've done, you know, what is this? Five more episodes. We do it every single week, Monday through Friday. Yep. Uh, thank you for tuning in. If you like today's episode, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Yeah, and thank you to Content Stack for letting us film here every single day in Austin, Texas. If you like today's show, whether you're on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast, or X, leave us a like, a comment, and a review. Throw us a five-star rating if you think we earned it. And as always, we'll see you Monday morning here at Venture Daily.